Oh, hi there and welcome to the new video here on my channel about dating guys with Asperger's Syndrome or High Functioning Autism. So I figured I uh, make a quick uh, video where I breeze through the symptoms of Asperger's in adults, um, you know, the way I see it. Um, because if you look up Asperger's uh, on Wikipedia or elsewhere, you might read a lot about symptoms that um, apply more to kids and teens. And um, you know, when you when you get to the age group uh, that I'm talking about, like 30s, 40s, 50s, um, people you know typically have found a lot of uh, um, coping strategies and workarounds uh, for for some of their symptoms and. Asperger's looks very different in an older adult than it does um, for a teen. Um, yeah, so here's my list of things which I think are ex extremely important to understand about Asperger's uh, for a neurotypical person. And yeah, this video is for neurotypical, so you will probably not get much from it if you have Asperger's. Um, and this is all my perspective. So. In my opinion, the most important thing to understand about people with Asperger's is that they, you know, crave human connection, um, you know, just as much as normal people do. Uh, they're just somewhat impaired in the how. So, um, and of course, there are individual differences. More people are, you know, some people are more loners. Some people are more, you know, want to be super social, but, you know. They, they have the wanting to the same level, you know, they want connection to other people, they, they want to have romantic relationships, they want to have that special um, person in their life, um, but, you know, their brain kind of uh, prevents them from, from doing it easily because they have trouble with the how. It can be difficult to understand because to us, you know, typical is the how is almost, you know, the, the doing is in the being, so, like, if I have been inside and kind of, you know, getting cabin fever and I want to go out and socialize, I go and, you know, I might call some friends, uh, I might go to some, you know, music event, some meetup event or whatever, and I will be smiling at people, they smile back at me, I do some small talk, I socialize, and my, full, my need for human connection can be fulfilled that way. Now, a person with Asperger's has the same need, but they have trouble in that social interaction where they can't read facial cues, uh, um, you know, they, they have trouble carrying on the conversation, um, and so so they crave that connection, but they don't know how to do it. Yeah, it's, you just have to think of, of little kids with autism or Asperger's who, you know, they the brain's wired in a way where they don't... They don't look at their parent constantly because they don't see the pride or joy or happiness on their face. <clears throat> People with Asperger's are just pretty bad at reading facial cues. So, which brings me to my second point, which is it's a neurological condition. And especially with older people with Asperger's that blend in so well, it's easy to forget that. Uh, you know, you might feel like, oh, well, you know, if he was just a little bit more attentive, if he was just a little bit uh, less obsessed uh, with his special interests, and if he was just, if he would just go out and socialize more, you know, uh, then, you know, everything would be fine. Um, but their brains are really wired differently. And, you know, science hasn't, like, done tons of progress there, but it seems um, on brain scans, etc., that especially with the, I guess it's called amygdala, a part of the brain that processes uh, memories and emotions, um, they don't have, they have a different wiring there, um, where maybe they don't store, uh, they, they don't perceive emotional context as easily and then store it with memories. Um, something that I get into this in other videos, um, how I think uh, it works. Um, yeah, and emotions is very, very intertwined with body language. I mean, it's hard for us to think of happiness without thinking of the whole demeanor of somebody else's happiness or anger without the, you know, the, the, all the facial expressions and body language that goes with it. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and, and uh, People with Asperger's are, are 
bad at perceiving those things and they're also bad at projecting those things because of course if you can't perceive it how would you project it and again that can be difficult to understand that that somebody who's maybe happy to be with you enjoying your presence would not automatically then smile and lean in and do all these things as neurotypical people do but um, yeah people with Asperger's um, they are, have much less body language somewhere between zero percent and you know 70 80 percent so it could be just a bit dampened where they're just a little bit more stiff you know facial ex expressions are just a little bit more subdued and um, voice a bit more monotone or there could be voice could be very monotone and it could be you know completely immobile and not you know make much gestures or facial expressions and that of course again in dating situations can signal the wrong thing that which would be that maybe they're not interested they're withdrawn you know stuff like that and um, yeah, to illustrate, I think I'm going to cue now a couple of clips of people who are further along on the spectrum or more affected. I was quiet all my life till I was in fourth grade. And in fourth grade, I started asking almost over 50 questions. And in grade 11, my school was shown a video of Terry Fox and his ambition to run across Canada. So that made me feel remorse for having quit the cross-country running team early the previous two years. And I thought, I may never run across Canada, but the least I can do is be more faithful in attending the practices and make sure I attend all the meets. That was the turning point after which running was... Yeah, so... If you watch this as a neurotypical person, it can be pretty disconcerting and confusing that a person would talk without, uh, you know, illustrating their their emotional states through gestures, facial expression, or just very little. And I thought how ironic and amazing it is that when we watch somebody with Asperger's who's more affected. That's how we come, that's how a lot of people with Asperger's see us. When we talk, they don't perceive all the body language and, um, you know, more facial expressions. They perceive just the words, you know, just like the people we just heard with Asperger's were just, just saying the words and not illustrating the words much with their body language. So I just thought this explains very well why, for example, people with Asperger's often don't enjoy small talk. They, you know, imagine if you only get the words, if you don't get all that body language and stuff with, that goes with it, that makes conversation so enjoyable and that makes the emotional connection with the other person. If you just hear the words, yeah, it's no wonder a lot of people with Asperger's find like, you know, okay, what's the point of small talk or these kind of things. Um, um, yeah, and they can't have a how you you can't tell sarcasm, or you would have a really hard time picking up um, if this person, like you just saw the video, told a joke or whatever. You would really have to think if it was the joke or not, because we just project so much through our body language, and that escapes a lot of people with Asperger's. And um, yeah, uh, next point though, they do. Um, they can train themselves and a lot of people with Asperger's they they learn to watch people read body language and they process you know as you're talking as the con conversation unfolds they um, can read and then interpret it but they do it very consciously they don't do it like we do where it's like subconsciously if you can immediately tell if, if I if I smile but they have to really analyze and pay attention if they don't pay attention they might miss completely uh, the facial expressions of the other person and they might have the sensory perception or visual perception of the person person's body language but only later when they analyze the um, conversation that took took place in their head, they might realize, wow, you know, this person smiled or this person um, was was angry or really aggravated with me and I, you know, didn't even 
it did, I didn't even notice at the time. So, so that's stuff I gathered from from threads where Aspies, you know, discuss uh, what's going on. And I thought I thought that was really remarkable because to me, very often you just can't tell that they have all this going on uh, because like. 95% of the time they act completely normal and then it's only like if they completely don't get a fairly simple joke or completely don't get that you said something sarcastic with a really sarcastic tone then yeah then you go like yeah there's something going on where they miss a lot a lot more than I thought um, yeah um, yeah but you know especially men are uh, Aspie men, I think, are they feel if they're not good at something like small talk or socializing, very often they just won't do it or not put themselves out there. Um, whereas on YouTube, if you watch female Aspies, you know, just like no typical women, they have a lot of interest in social interactions and they might actually, from a very young age, start studying people, studying their body language, studying how to talk, how to act. And then they become super great at it, and then on those YouTube videos, you can't even tell uh, that this woman has Asperger's. So, so you know, just the guys don't do it as much, so you might run across that 30, 40, 50 something guy who's still is really socially awkward. Um, I think that's part of my um, you know, intention for this channel, because once a guy works up the interest where he wants to put himself out there, there might not be that many resources and yeah, where where do you start later in life? But the brain is very pliable and once people get interested in it and Aspies are very, very smart, they they can really uh, um improve their social life and uh and then and then just you know, it hit hit the ground running. Maybe not hit the ground running, but get a lot better um at these things. Um yeah. But until then, they often have coping strategies, and and those strategies might even work very well in casual situations, like with coworkers or you know casual friends or family. Um, but you know, with a dating situation where the other person tries to build this really deep emotional connection, uh, these strategies then fail. Um, like you can wiggle your way out of out of a conversation or small talk with your neighbor, but you can't do that with your girlfriend over and over. So I get into this in other videos, what those coping strategies are, but of course with introverted Aspies, it's often like, you know, they they present themselves as the great, as the great listener, you know, they will not say much, and will avoid saying anything uh, and let just the woman talk. Um, or, you know, they might come up with phrases that they say in typical situations where the conversation takes an emotional turn. Or, or they might get really good at, at, you know, directing the conversation back to subjects that they are very familiar with, with, with something like superficial charm or whatever. Whereas a woman, once that happens a few times, you go like, just he's doing this thing again, where I try to talk about his childhood and he turns it around and starts talking about his passion for soccer and then the World Cup that's coming up. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, stimming and sensory issues. Now those are more prevalent, I guess, in kids. And stimming is like any kind of uh, mannerisms or behaviors where they may, may be just rocking while they're talking. Uh, some younger people with Asperger's also you know, have really real hand gestures as they're talking. Um, uh, maybe like facial tics. Um, but people lose those over time, I guess. Um, uh, um, but, um, but sensory issues, yeah. This is something I didn't realize for the longest time that um, Asperger's also comes with uh, sensory issues um, in a way that, you know, just like their brain doesn't intuitively filter for them what, you know, facial expressions into emotions and, you know, the same way the brain is bad at filtering um, sensory perceptions uh, that if they're in a room and there's a fan going and, and lights and people talking in the background and then the person that they are talking to 
they might hear all this and see all this and the brain's not so good at filtering down to what's important, which is that one conversation and what the other person is saying. So um, I thought that was really interesting, even to think that maybe those those kind of nerdy guys who like to wear fedoras might be so popular with them because they want to avoid overhead lights or something. So. Um, now the guys I dated, I really never noticed sensory issues. I mean, we would go to rock concerts and stuff like that. Uh, would go shopping at Costco, no problem. Where a lot of kids with, with on the autism spectrum, you know, throw those tantrums in the grocery store because the lights and all those sensory perceptions are overwhelming. Uh, now I've had, as we say, they don't want to be in crowds and avoid crowd situations. And uh, more than one Aspie I dated loved his like half hour showers and to me it was like always well, what's this waste of water and electricity and everything but you know Aspies can have you know can everyday life can be so sensory overwhelming that they really enjoy that half hour or hour in the shower where the water drains out everything around them and it's like almost this artificial uh, sensory deprivation that happens there that helps them relax. Um, special interests, yeah, I m mentioned that before, um, Aspies tend to have their obsessions and I think it's uh, they enjoy completely figuring out one subject like in this very uncertain world with all these you know overwhelming sensory issues and emotions and socializing if you give them a te technical subject or, or a TV show or anything that they can deep into get deep into and then figure it out and know everything about it that must be extremely comforting um, to a to an Aspie who then knows like cause and effect he knows everything that's happen happening within a domain he can talk about it and People with Asperger's typically, you know, when they talk about their favorite subjects, you know, they are a completely different person, uh, very relaxed, and they love talking about it. They might, might smile and and just, you know, really enjoy that. And then, you know, if you talk about something that they're less interested in, it's almost like, you know, shutters go down and they they uh, have a hard time working up interest in other things, um, including your hobbies, and of course. That causes trouble in dating when you feel like your guy is just not interested in what you do um, in your life. Um, I get into this in other videos. Um, yeah, uh, meltdowns and freezing up. I don't think I've ever had like a adult male Aspie meltdown in front of me. Of course, that's more common with children, but. If an Aspie gets completely overloaded by, um, you know, social situations, sensory perception, etc., so then sometimes they go into complete meltdown mode where you see, you know, especially younger adults, like bang their head against the wall, or you know, uh, yeah, there's something like selective mutism where they can't speak uh, then for a while. Um, now freezing up, I've encountered, you know, especially. As, re as the relationship progresses and then maybe you have that okay we need to talk conversation with your boyfriend and you talk about the relationship and maybe you you're crying you tell him all these things about where you feel kind of he's not understanding you or or yeah then then uh, you, you bring up these things and then very quickly the Aspie shuts down completely and I think it's then um, again, hard for us to understand as a neurotypical person, because most neurotypicals at that point, as a male, would still be able to say, "Yeah, I, I, I know, you know, I've dropped the ball often, and I, you know, I can understand how you feel, um, but you know, I, I, so they can at least somewhat empathize and then express that, but the SB can't even do that. Uh, it's like brains completely shut down and overloaded, and." Uh, at best, they might mumble something. Typically, they just avoid those um, situations as best as they can. And uh, yeah, all right. Um, last point. Um, again, everything is a spectrum. You know, people's desire to socialize and date. There are some people who just don't even want to date. And I saw online that you know some people. 
some guys they they like more the idea of a girlfriend or hanging out with a girlfriend but not so much maybe the physical and sex part because they might their sensory issues might be so much that they don't even like to be touched by another person so um so we really don't know uh because Asperger's has so many different um levels how it can manifest itself and then you have a lot of you know people at different ages uh different coping strategies some might have gotten therapy and support from their parents. Some people might have grown up with zero support and had to figure it all out themselves and might have gone through you know, long periods of depression and um, you know, withdrawal from social situations. So, so every aspect is, is completely different. Um, I don't want to wrap up though with saying we don't, you know, we don't appreciate enough how much um, they've gone through and how much they've adapted by the time we meet that SP who fits in like 95% of the time or 98% of the time uh, and then we only notice when they split when they slip up um, you know we we don't realize that uh, uh, you know how much effort went into that over the years how much they got bullied they were chances are they were way more awkward in younger years they had to work through that uh, through tons of rejection picking themselves up by their bootstraps again and again and um, yeah I mean if we meet a person and that person taught themselves five or six languages we go like whoa this what an accomplishment and wow but but because socializing comes to us so easily it like it doesn't feel like we can't realize that this is a really huge accomplishment when a person with Asperger's has learned to blend in and, and you know taught themselves how to you know, even even the psychological and, and intellectual effort of, of of pulling that off, and then you know, to the point where they feel more comfortable, and then they go out to online dating and uh, you know, going to meet up events, and yeah, we we don't even see all that. And the more I did research on those forums, um, listen to YouTube videos from Aspies, the more I went like, wow, there's this whole world that I wasn't even aware of. How you know. How, uh, how difficult it is and then you know as a neurotypical you just go like why did this guy not get the joke or whatever um, but um, yeah really you know the intelligence um, and then of course people with Asperger's I think are so smart because their brain is constantly working over time because as neurotypicals you know we sometimes vegetate you know we just chat with our friends we you know uh, we, we just hang out and we have long periods where our brain's not doing much. Now a person with Asperger's, their brain will be constantly looking for patterns, analyzing, um, um, you know, when they're out in a social situation that to us is relaxing. And I found very interesting too that a lot of people with Asperger's and get so good at it and at studying um, other people and consciously reading body language, etc., that they then become, you know, they, they get jobs like psychoanalyst, uh, screenwriter, actor, um, and excel in that. I get into this in other videos, but yeah. Anyway, so all these things are things that came to my mind that I wanted to um, talk about for Neurotypicals finding this channel. And I get into all the stuff in other videos <coughs> more in depth and um, yeah, if that interests you, I um, you know certainly check those out. And if you do, I look forward to talking with you again really soon. All right, bye.